Seems like just yesterday, John Morant was drafted to the Memphis Grizzlies. From Rookie of the Year to Most Improved Player to a bunch of issues outside of basketball. The Memphis Grizzlies are in a great spot. They have a great coach, a great roster. They picked up a seasoned veteran in Derrick Rose over the summer. So I'm actually really excited to see what this Memphis Grizzlies team can do. Unfortunately, John Morant is suspended, I believe, the first 25 games of the season. So stuff is going to be a lot different with Ja being out. But once he does come back, they're definitely going to want to try and make that playoff push if they're already not in the move for the playoffs. But we'll see what happens. But either way, we're going to head over to 2K and kind of see how this team plays out. I'm excited to see how this goes. And uh, I'll see you guys in 2K. All right, now that we're on 2K, we're going to go ahead and check out the roster. I did apply an injury to John Morant just for 25 days. So that way he doesn't play the first 25. So that way it's fair and we play exactly how it's supposed to be played. But the current roster, we have John Morant, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr. We have Marcus Smart, Steven Adams, Xavier, Xavier Tillman Sr., Brandon Clark, Luke Kennard, Santi Aldama, Derek Rose, David Roddy, Kenneth Lofton Jr., John Conchar, Zaire Williams, Jake LaRavia, Jacob Gilliard, I believe, or Gilliard, and Vince Williams Jr. So overall, we have a pretty solid team. Like usual, I'm not going to make any trades for the first season. Once Ja does come back from the 25-game suspension, we'll kind of check out his numbers at the end of the season and see how he did. But of course, we're going to simulate this first season, and I will see you guys at the end. All right, guys, we are wrapping up the season. As of right now, we are sitting in fourth place in the Western Conference. Ja sitting out all those games definitely, definitely did play a big factor on us. Uh, the injuries did mess up for a little while, and of course they had him play the first games even though I gave him an injury and yada yada yada, but I ended up making it work to where he sat out 25 games regardless. But either way, we have Joel Embiid as your MVP, Rookie of the Year goes to Victor Wembanyama, Nas Reed Sixth Man of the Year, Giannis is your Depoy, Nas Reed is also your Most Improved, Clutch Player of the Year goes to Shea, Nick Nurse is your Coach of the Year. You're all NBA first, all NBA second team, and then all NBA third. And you got your defensive teams with Jaron Jackson Jr. making it. We love to see it. And we don't have any rookies. And as I said, we are the fourth seed and we are taking on the Clippers in the first round. Go ahead and simulate game one in which we take. We love to see it. Game two is theirs. Game three is also theirs. Game four is ours. Come on, let's take the lead, boys. And we end up getting it. All right, let's get it done. All right, we are taking on the ace seeded Minnesota Timberwolves in the next round. We'll go ahead and simulate the first game in which they take. Wow. Game two is ours. Game three is ours. Game four is also ours. Can we get this done right now? And we do. Let's see who we take on the next round. It looks like it's going to be OKC. They do have a really good team. Go ahead and simulate game one in which we take. We love to see it. Simulate game two. They take that. Game three is also OKC's. Game four is ours. Okay. Come on. Okay, let's go. We took the lead. Let's go ahead and simcast this one. I kind of want to see how close it plays out. We did make a really good far run into the playoffs so far. And it looks like we're kicking their ass, but they are making a slight little comeback. Anything can happen, but it looks like we're going to run away with it in the fourth corner or fourth quarter, not corner, and move on to the next round. And we are in the, the finals taking on the Celtics. So from John Morant sitting out 25 games to becoming Western Conference uh, MVP for the conference finals then we have Jason Tatum as your Eastern Conference let's go ahead and simulate game one in which they take game two is also theirs game three is also theirs oh man all right we're obviously gonna have to change this up a little bit let's go down to the eight-man rotation get everybody the minutes they want to play I don't really want Steven Adams playing 32 if I'm being completely honest I'll probably knock him down I'll probably knock him down as well I definitely want to have Marcus Smart in there for the defensive presence uh, I'll probably give him 37, Bain, and Jackson Jr. Okay. I'm cool with that. Try and do the best we can and make it out of this round. If not, then hey, it happens. It's only the first year in the rebuild. Shit happens. So far, they do have the lead on us going into the fourth. Yep. And they ended up packing us up and sending us home. We lost by 21 points, and we got swept in the NBA Finals with Jason Tatum as your Finals MVP. All right. Well, you obviously know we're headed in the right direction. We do make the uh, the finals in the very first year of the rebuild, even though Josh sat out. I don't believe we're going to have too crazy of a pick here. 
and if we do then i'll be shocked we don't really have anything crazy we end up with the 24th pick so it's nothing really worth uh checking out if i'm being completely honest we're gonna head over to the player options get everybody back that we need to like usual and go from there i definitely want to bring back luke Kennard, even though he's a little expensive david roddy and laravia i don't know i don't really think i'm gonna bring them back if i'm being completely honest i would like to get some other players for the roster some more fillers and stuff like that we'll go ahead and check out free agency and see who's available uh nothing really too promising here i definitely want to bring back tillman he's a good piece on this roster we'll give him about nine million dollars a year see if there's anybody else that we can bring in mo Bama's not a horrible addition but i don't really think we need him too much we got a lot of center play in our backcourt um I don't really see anybody else here really too worth it to bring in. So I don't think I'm going to do anything free agency wise. I'm just going to let the rest of these guys walk. Kind of free up some space. All right. Um, I'm going to check out one more time. See exactly what we need because... Okay, so we got our backups good for the most part. We'll probably make a few trades and get some pieces compared to go do anything in free agency, if I'm being completely honest. Head over to player progression, check and see how everybody did. John Moran goes up, Desmond Bang goes up, Tillman goes up, Steven Adams goes down four. I figured that was going to happen, and a couple other people go up for the most part. we love to see it. We'll go ahead and advance to the next season. Load in our draft class. Uh, if we do some trades, I'll show you guys those. Um, if not, then we'll show you the beginning of the season. Check out the rosters and go from there. The first trade we're going to do, we're going to be sending Santi Aldama and Steven Adams over to the Mavericks for Grant Williams and Dante Exum. Exum's not going to get any playing minutes, but Grant Williams will more than likely be going to be our backup four. For our next trade, we're going to be sending Brandon Clark, John Conchar, and Bobby Clintman over to the Washington Wizards in exchange for Daniel Gafford and Gabe Vincent. We'll have Daniel Gafford more than likely be our new starting center or backup center, and then we'll have Gabe Vincent for a backup point guard. Overall, a solid trade. Right, and for now, those are all the trades that we are going to make. We have John Morant, we have Marcus Smart, we got Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., Daniel Gafford, and then we have the backup of Gabe Vincent, Grant Williams, Luke Kennard, Xavier Tillman Sr., and Zaire Williams. Overall, a pretty solid overall lineup. We'll go ahead and simulate this season. If there's a few trades to be done at the deadline, I will show you guys those. If not, I will see you guys at the end of the season. All right, we are wrapping up the end of the year. As of right now, we are sitting in second place in the Western Conference. Overall, we had a really solid year. Before I forget again, like last year, I'm gonna check out the stats, but we finished off, I believe it said 56 wins, and we have Shea Gilders Alexander as your MVP, Mara as your Rookie of the Year, Fold Sixth Man of the Year in Golden State, Depoy goes to Evan Mobley, Scoot Henderson is your most improved. Clutch player of the year goes to Joel Embiid. And Mark Dagno is your coach of the year. It's your All-NBA first team. All-NBA second. And then All-NBA third. John Moran not making any of them or any of our players, which is super unfortunate to see. We do have Jaron Jackson Jr. making the All-Defensive second team. We love to see that from our star power forward. We don't have any rookies, so we are good there. Before I get, like I said, I want to check out the season stats. We got Ja leading the way with 20 points per game, six and a half, or basically six and a half rebounds and eight and a half assists. Right behind him, we had Desmond Bain with 17.6, four and a half, and about four assists. Jaron Jackson Jr. also played really well, along with Smart and Gafford. Uh, Gabe Vincent scoring a lot off the bench, which I'm kind of surprised about, along with Grant Williams. Maybe I have their tendencies turned up a little bit too much. Maybe. Uh, who knows but either way pretty solid season from both of them uh we are in the playoffs like i said and we are the second seed and we are taking on the houston rockets in the first round they did give us a lot of problems throughout the regular season so we'll kind of see how this goes we'll simulate the first game in which they take like i said they gave us a lot of problems throughout the regular season and now we're down 2-0 so obviously we need to go to our eight-man lineup and see how they want to do it all right, so if they think that's our best bet, then let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, 
you know, go ahead and simcast and see how this plays out. If it's close, we'll go ahead and jump in. But as of right now, it looks like we're running away with it. Maybe that eight-man lineup was the way to go. 2-1 Rockets. Hopefully, this game could be ours. I definitely want to tie this series up. It is a really close game heading into the third corner. Maybe uh, we will be able to jump in this game. I guess we'll see. We should be able to, honestly, unless the Rockets don't score a basket here. Five-point game, three-point game. 30 seconds left, five-point game. Yeah, Memphis ran away with it. I was going to hop in, but it didn't really seem like it was worth it at the point in time. We'll go ahead and simulate the next game. And wish we lost. All right. Down 3-2. Hopefully, we can win this game and force a game seven. Looks like right now they're kicking our ass, but it doesn't mean we can't come back. Looks like they're going to run away with this, and they're going to take us out. Yep, they end up beating us by 10, and we lost in the first round to the seven-seeded Houston Rockets. All right. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done. Go ahead and simulate the rest, and we have Shea Gildas Alexander as your Western Conference MVP and Tyrese Halliburton as your Eastern Conference MVP with the OKC Thunder winning it in six games and Shea Gildas Alexander as your Finals MVP. Love to see that for Shea. Shea is definitely one of my favorite players in the league behind like Cade Cunningham, Jason Tatum, stuff like that. But I'm also super biased because I'm a Pistons fan. So we do have the 28th overall pick. I think I might make a few moves. If I do, I obviously show you, I'll obviously show you them. But I definitely think that we need to get our better starting center. Not that I think uh, Daniel Gafford's horrible by any means, but I don't think he's really like the best fit for our team at the starting center spot. So we'll go ahead, bring back everybody we need to, stuff like that. Not really too worried about the draft like usual, especially having the 28th pick or whatever it was. Not really too worried. Uh, Lofton's not really going to get any minutes, so I'm going to let him walk, unfortunately. I would have loved to keep him around for the Memphis fans because I know they got a special spot for him in their heart, unless I'm wrong, and I don't know. But uh, Luke Kennard's worth it for $4, $4 million, not $4. So we'll definitely bring him back. Not really too worried about Kenneth Lofton Jr., but we definitely want to get uh, Zaire back on the team. I don't know about $30 million, though, bro. You're you're probably tripping. You're a 77 overall. $22 million. I don't even know if I could do it. Or they give that to somebody else, if I'm being completely honest. But are there really better options here? Probably not. Um... I don't really like my odds but like at the same time like i don't want to like lose him for nothing so let's go ahead and bring him back and worst comes to worst if we have to trade him to get off that contract we will but i don't want to lose him for nothing just because that's kind of stupid um i don't really think there's anybody else or anything that we need to do in free agency wise so i'll go ahead and skip past that and go to the player progression Kind of see how everybody's progressing for the most part. I know Luke Kennard's probably going to go down. And maybe a couple other people. But, yeah, so we got Gabe Benson that went down. Luke Kennard actually stayed the same. Okay, we ended up getting Nasir Cunningham in the draft, which isn't too bad of a pick. Right now, we're going to go ahead and advance to the next season. Simulate, um, or sorry, load in our draft class. And then... See if we can make a few trades, get this roster in the right spot to win a championship. I'll see you guys then. For the first trade of this season, we're going to be sending Daniel Gafford, Zaire Williams, and a second round pick over to the Knicks in exchange for Josh Hart and Mitchell Robinson. Get ourselves a nice starting caliber center that can play defense and block some shots. He does only have one year left on his deal, but we can always bring him back if need be. All right, I know earlier in the video, or I guess not too long ago, I guess I could say, we traded for Mitchell Robinson. We're going to go ahead and exchange him for Jakob Pertl and Jalen Noel. And we're also going to be sending off Gabe Vincent as well. I do like Jakob Pertl a little bit better than Mitchell Robinson. So I think that's a nice upgrade. The next trade, we're going to be sending away Jalen Noel and Luke Kennard over to the OKC Thunder for Tyus Jones and a first round pick. Can never complain about picks. So we'll go ahead and do that trade. Our next trade is going to be sending Jason Preston, Dylan Windler, and Nathan Knight over to the Knicks for Terrence Mann and TJ McConnell. Terrence Mann is more likely going to be our backup shooting guard or point guard. We'll see you when that time comes. Now that we're done with all of our trades, we'll go ahead and check out the roster for this season. We got John Morant, Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., Jakob Pertl in your start of fi starting five. 
On the bench, we have Tyus Jones, Josh Hart, Grant Williams, Terrence Mann, and Xavier Tillman. Overall, pretty solid. I feel like our bench isn't like absolutely the best in our guard rotation. The backup center spot also isn't really the best in Xavier Tillman. I did try and upgrade, but there wasn't too many good trades out there. But I'm going to go ahead and simulate this season. Hopefully, we're another playoff team. Obviously, there's a lot more moves to be made just because I don't think this is really a championship roster yet. But we'll see. I'll see you guys at the end of the season. So far, it's been a very rough season. We are sitting at 22 and 30 in 12th place. And we are at the trade deadline. So we're going to go ahead and make a few trades. I definitely want to check out the stats for the season and kind of see how everybody's playing. And based off that, we'll kind of make a few trades. We got John Morant leading the way with 23, 6, 0.5, and 9, basically. Right behind him, we got Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr., Marcus Smart, Tyus Jones, Josh Hart, Grant Williams. I like Marcus Smart for like a defensive guard purpose, but man, I don't know if he's going to do it as my like my starting shooting guard, you know what I mean? Might have to actually explore a few trades. We'll see what happens. I definitely want to turn this team around. Uh, if there's not any good trades, then I won't make any. I don't want to make this team a lot worse than it is and then be screwed over next year. But we'll go over a few trades and I'll show you them when I get there. Right, I'm hoping that I don't regret this, but we're going to make a trade for Benedict Matherin and Maxi Kleba. We're going to be sending away Josh Hart and a first round pick for this year. We are sitting in 12th place, so this is going to be a pretty high valued pick, but I do have trust in Benedict Matherin, so we're going to go ahead and make the trade. This is another one of those trades that I hope I don't regret in the future, but we're going to be picking up Cole Anthony and Kelly Oubre Jr. from the Clippers in exchange for Grant Williams, Tyus Jones, and a first. For our next trade, we're going to be getting Grant Williams back from the Clippers and also with Otto Porter in exchange for Terrence Mann, Kleba, and a second round pick. I do like Grant Williams on this team. He does bring a lot of defense, so I'm happy with that. The next trade, we're going to be sending Jakob Pertl and Asir Cunningham over to the Blazers in exchange for Robert Williams and Sammy Calderon. So hopefully it works out for us. All right. In the long run, I might have screwed myself over because right now we are sitting in 12th place and it's not looking like we might make a playoff run. But in case we do, our lineup for this season is John Morant, Benedict Matherin, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., Robert Williams with the bench of Cole Anthony, Marcus Smart, Kelly Oubre Jr., Grant Williams, and Xavier Tillman. I'm not really too happy about the backup center spot, like I said, but I do kind of want to win Xavier Tillman a championship. If we can't even get close to that this season, obviously I'll make a few trades and try and bring back our main guys and fill up the roster from there. But we're going to simulate the rest of the season, and I'll see you guys at the end. Hopefully we're a good playoff team by then. All right, now that we're wrapping up the end of the season... We are sitting in fifth place as of right now. It keeps teeter-tottering back and forth. Now we're in fourth, but we do end up moving from 12th place to fourth place with 48 wins. So that was a really solid season. Somehow we have Evan Mobley winning the MVP with 17 points per game, 15 rebounds. Hey, go off. Whatever works. Uh, Cooper Flagg is your rookie of the year. Amon Thompson is your sixth man of the year. Evan Mobley is also your depoy. Wow, what a great season from Evan Mobley. Isaiah Collier is your most improved. Steph Curry is your clutch player of the year with J.B. Bickerstaff as your coach of the year. Overall, solid year from the Cavs. This is your All-NBA first team, All-NBA second, and All-NBA third. We do have John Morant making the All-NBA third team, so we do like to see that. We don't have... Actually, we do have a player on the defensive team in Jaron Jackson Jr. yet again, so that's also great to see. We're not going to have any rookies here. So we'll go ahead and move on to the playoffs. We are taking on Utah in the first round. We'll go ahead and simulate the first game in which they take. It's not a good look. And now they're up 2-0 on us. 2-1 Utah. Hopefully we can bring this back, in which we do. Tied up 2-2. They ended up taking the 3-2 lead on us, but we'll go ahead and simulate the next game. Hopefully we can win this one and take it to a game 7 because I definitely don't want to be out in the first round. That would suck. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna take this one. That was a really good, that was a really good win. So go ahead and simulate the next game. Hopefully we can get this one done. Like I said, I don't want to be eliminated in the first round. They are smoking us. Yeah, it's not looking too good, guys. Wow, 
we got absolutely packed up. All right. Like I said, the team wasn't really the best, and I already knew that, but the trades did set us up a little bit. But obviously, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be needed to be done. We got Anthony Davis as your Western Conference MVP and Evan Mobley as your Eastern Conference MVP with the Cavs winning it in five. But Donovan Mitchell as your most valuable player for the finals. All right. We'll go ahead and move on to the next season. Our draft pick hopefully isn't too valuable. The one that we traded away. It ends up being at 25, so that's really not too much of a loss. It would have been a lot more hurtful if we ended up giving them a high draft pick, but we made the trades that we needed to make, and it ended up working out. Hopefully, we can bring back our main guys. Now, I'm hoping that I didn't mess that up. If I did, then it's obviously my fault, then, then whatever, but... Jaron Jackson Jr. is without a doubt my first priority on this team. My next priority would definitely have to be Benedict Matherin if we can bring him back. I'm matching it. I don't care. Derek Jones Jr. can walk. Sammy can walk. Otto can walk. Marcus Smart, I'll probably bring him back as well for off the bench again that's if he doesn't want too much money and if we can afford him if we can drop him down to about 16 7 5 and he'll take that i'll love it all right we still got to re-sign robert williams which i would not mind at all he's a really solid player for the team and we do have enough money to bring him back but i'll drop it down to about 23 million dollars a year so we don't fuck ourselves over next year and hopefully he will sign that, in which he does. Uh, I'm not really too sure what else I'll probably do free agency-wise. Probably nothing. Maybe I'll bring in one of these guys for like a young backup piece just in case. But I don't really even think we'll even use him. So I'll just go ahead and skip past that anyway. We'll go ahead and head over to player progression. Check out and see how everybody's progressed. Hopefully pretty good for the most part. Our team is a lot more deep than it was last year. Marcus Smart does go down one. Maybe we'll have to end up trading him away. Who knows? But overall, pretty solid looking team. We love to see it. Only person that went down was Marcus Smart. But we'll go ahead and advance to the next season. Loading our draft class. If there's any trades that need to be done, uh, I'll show you guys those. If not, then I'll see you guys at the end of the season. Okay, so I believe this might be the only trade that we're going to make. But if not, I'll show you the more. But we're going to be sending away Xavier Tillman, Sam Hauser, and John Wall, along with a second-round pick in exchange for Zach Collins and Charles Phillips from the Philadelphia 76ers. I like Zach Collins. He can bring great defense to the team, and he can also space the floor. So that's great to see, and we'll go ahead and bring him into the team. We're going to see and attempt to make this trade. We're going to try and bring in Nicholas Claxton from the Pistons. We're going to be sending away Robert Williams, Charles Phillips, Charles Phillips, and two first-round picks. Hopefully they accept it. And they do. And we go ahead and bring in Claxton. And that's going to be our final trade of this season. For this season, we have a really solid starting lineup and bench. So I'm really hoping we can get it done this year. The starting lineup, we have John Morant, Benedict Matherin, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Nick Claxton. And off the bench, we have Marcus Smart, Cole Anthony, Kelly Oubre Jr., Zach Collins, and Grant Williams. Pretty happy with this team and how it's constructed. I went and messed with the tendencies and the system proficiency and stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and send the season and I'll see you guys at the end. All right, we're wrapping up the season and we're going to finish as the one seed with 57 wins. So that is great to see. Hopefully this is our year to get it done. If not, I'll be upset. But we have Evan Mobley as your MVP again with 17 points, 15 rebounds. It's kind of crazy that he's winning MVP like that. But hey, go off. Malik Thomas is your rookie of the year. Isaiah Collier, sixth man of the year. Evan Mobley Depoy yet again. Dylan Harper is your most improved. John Morant as your clutch player of the year. And Steve Clifford as your coach of the year. This is your All-NBA first team. All-NBA second. And All-NBA third. And then your defensive teams with Jaron Jackson Jr. being here again. We love him as a solid defensive presence for this team. So. Just because I always forget... I want to go ahead and check out the stats for the season. We got John ja Morant, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Benedict Matherin leading the way. Just as I expected, 
with Cole Anthony and Kelly Rubre off the bench, also putting up some solid numbers. Overall, we have a pretty deep team, as I was saying at the beginning of the year. Um, I'm hoping that we do good in the playoffs. We are the one seed taking on the Lakers in the first round. We'll go ahead and simulate the first game in which we win. Go ahead and simulate game two. We also take that. Game three is ours. Hopefully we sweep them and get them out of there, in which we do. And it looks like we're going to be taking on Minnesota in the next round. We're going to simulate game one, in which they take. Game two is ours. Game three is also ours. Game four is theirs. Five. Oh, all right. We go down one. Maybe we'll go ahead and change up the lineups down to an eight-man rotation. Get us exactly where we want to be. I'm not really stressed about Grant Williams and Zach Collins playing as much as we need a backup center and a four. But got to do what you got to do. Hopefully, we can win this game and force a game seven. It is a really close game, but it looks like we're going to take the lead heading into the fourth. But they do catch back up, and it is a really close game again. So I'm going to slow this down and kind of let it play out. I want to see if it's a close game that we can hop into. It is a three-point game with 20 seconds left, so we will hop in and see how it plays out. I definitely want to get some gameplay in here just because I think that it's worth it. So we got Clint Capella passing the ball in. He's probably going to send it off to Anthony Edwards, in which he does. Being guarded closely by Marcus Smart, probably the best player to have, him out, have on him on in this, in this situation. Looks like he's going to dribble the ball out. Maybe not. Passes it off to McDaniels. Back out to Edwards. Takes the shot. And he misses it. Hold down to the ball. Jaron Jackson Jr. is fouled. Looks like Jeremy Sohan followed him, who is on the Timberwolves now, which is kind of weird. But it's whatever. Looks like we're going to go ahead and finish the game. I guess we can't quit during the middle of a timeout or a simment. So we'll go ahead and wait. Go ahead and sim to the end. And it looks like we take it 121 to 118. We love to see it. All right, game seven. Go ahead and simcast. And hopefully we can get it done, man. I really want to make it to the finals. I think we can, I think we got a good shot. And it looks like we're going to run away with it into the fourth quarter. But they are catching back up. It is only a six point game. And it looks like we ran away with it towards the end there. And we move on to the conference finals, taking on Golden State. Go ahead and simulate the first game in which we take. We love to see it. Game two is ours. Game three is theirs. Game four is also theirs. Oh, man. All right. Game five. Come on. Game six goes to them. All right. Game seven. Conference finals. Memphis versus Golden State. They do have a slight lead. Oh, man. They're kicking our ass. Oh, it's not looking good, guys. Wow. And we just lost in game seven of the conference finals with Malik, Tom Malik Thomas as your Western Conference MVP and Evan Mobley as your Eastern Conference MVP with the Cavs winning it in five. Man, I feel like we had a good chance against those Cavaliers, man. Fuck. All right. Well, I guess it's time to head into the next season. This will probably be the year before the last of the rebuild. I'm not really trying to take up too much of everybody's time. I know this video is already starting to get long as it is. Uh, I don't believe we have any like decent picks that's worth even looking at. We do have 29th pick, so it's nothing really even to stress about as usual. Usual. I don't really like. I don't really draft too many players anyway. I probably should or trade away the picks. If I'm being completely honest, but looks like Nick Claxton is gonna decline his player option. I'm not really too worried about bringing Ish Wayne right back. We'll go ahead and offer Nick Claxton a contract to go ahead and bring him back. Um, I don't really want to renounce the rights on Grant if I have to, but if I have to, I will. All right, there we go. What about Collins? No, I can't. Okay, whatever. I'm not really too stressed about letting Zach Collins walk. I'm hoping we can get either Ubre or Grant Williams back. I'm hoping we can get both. That'd be sick. Hopefully they'll come back for a little bit less. Looks like they might for the most part. Grant Williams doesn't really want too much to begin with. So that is a plus. We might trade him away. If I'm being completely honest. 
but I don't want to lose him for anything. And the fact that he doesn't want $21 million a year is cool, but he decided to go with the Miami Heat. But we do end up getting Kelly Oubre back, which is nice. So I'm not going to complain about it. I'll go ahead and bring back Zach Collins because he's a pretty cheap backup center and he's serviceable for the most part. He'll get the job done when you need him to. Three years, 20, 21. That's not too bad for him. Um, Isaiah Joe brings in a nice backup shooting guard presence. I'm not really sure if we need him at all, considering we have Marcus Smart. But you never know. Marcus Smart could be on the move. I guess we'll see. That might be all I do for free agency for now. Don't really see anything else too interesting here. So we'll head over to player progression check and see how everybody did on the season hopefully we see improvement and not going down so we do have marcus smart going down which i did kind of expect he's starting to get up there in age everybody else didn't really go up very much isaiah joe did go down which i'm kind of shocked about i was hoping he'd develop pretty nicely but who knows it is 2k uh, we're gonna go ahead and advance to the next season loading our draft class like usual if we make any trades i'll show you those if not uh, we're going to try and run it back for a championship again this year. Grizzlies fans, please do not hate me, but we're going to be sending away Marcus Smart and Isaiah Joe over to the Mavericks in exchange for Jaden Hardy, who's a young, upcoming, great shooting guard, and he's going to upgrade this team greatly. So we're going to go ahead and do that trade with the Dallas Mavericks. For the next trade, we're going to be sending Zach Collins, Devontae Graham, and a second-round pick over to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for Derek Lively and a first-round pick. We get a nice solid young center back and we also get a first round pick so we love that deal for us to play our backup four position we're gonna be sending away nathan knight and lindy waters in exchange for jeremiah robinson earl from the detroit pistons i like this trade a lot for us for our next trade we're gonna be sending away kelly Oubre, jenathan williams frederick goodwin in exchange for herb jones and justin champagne uh, gets us a nice solid backup small forward and he's a solid 82 overall so we'd love to see that for our bench and i believe that's all the trades we're going to make for this season let's go ahead and do this and get it done after making all the trades that we did our lineup for this season we got john morant benedict matherin desmond bain jaron jackson jr nick claxton off the bench we got herb jones Jaden hardy cole anthony Derek lively and jeremiah robinson earl uh, I'm not really sure if we'll be better than we are, than we were last year, but let's go ahead and sim this season, and I'll see you guys at the end. All right, we are wrapping up the year. We are the first place in the Western Conference. We are sitting at 66 wins and 16 losses. This is definitely by far the best season we've had the entire video, so we do like to see that. Hopefully, this is the year. This will probably uh, might be the last year. Maybe one more year after this. We'll we'll see how it goes. We want to at least play five years. In the rebuild but we got luka Doncic as your mvp rookie of the year goes to bryce james isaiah collier is your sixth man of the year evan mobley is your defensive player of the year Bilal koulibaly is your most improved john morant is your clutch player of the year and steve clifford as your coach of the year you're all nba first team all nba second team with john morant on there love to see it and then you're all nba third team and then your defensive teams jaron jackson jr on the all defensive second team for basically his entire career looks like and we're not going to have any rookies so i definitely want to go ahead and check out the stats for the season because like i said i always forget we got john leading the way with 21 five and a half and about 10 assists so basically a double double on the season right behind him we had desmond bang with 19 four and a half and four and a half another solid season from him jaron jackson jr and benedict matherin also with about 15 16 points a game we love to see it Jaron Jackson Jr. rebounding the, wall, the ball well, along with Claxton. Claxton's not really a scorer, but he does provide blocks along with Jaron Jackson, so we do have a great defensive front court. Uh, the bench, Jaden Hardy did really good, along with Cole Anthony. The rest of the guys don't really score as much. I should probably ter turn up Herb Jones's shot tendency. He definitely deserves more points and more touches than he's getting, but... Just to start this off, I kind of want to just start off automatically with the eight-man lineup and kind of see how that goes for us. Uh, it might screw us over in the end with not having a backup center, but with our two guys in the front court, I think we should be good. Go ahead and simulate game one, in which we take. Game two, we take that as well. Game three, and hopefully we can get them out of here in four, in which we don't, but that's okay. 
simulate the next game in which we take it and it looks like we're gonna be playing okc in the next round they get they did give us a little bit of trouble in the regular season uh, i think there were one or two of the games that we lost out of the 16 i believe so we'll go ahead and simulate the first game in which we take we love to see it game two is theirs game three is also theirs game four is ours let's go ahead and take the lead come on let's go all right go ahead and simcast the next game and if it's close we'll go ahead and jump into it right now we do have a decent lead heading into the third but they are catching back up quick it still is anybody's game six point game about three minutes left they are making shots right now and they do catch back up it is a five point game now a two point game with 55 seconds left and since it's such a close game with 25 seconds left we'll go ahead and jump in i definitely want to knock these guys out of the playoffs but i have no control of that so we'll watch and see what happens looks like we got uh j dub passing the ball in to frank nidokina which i'm kind of shocked about and then we got chet holmgren out there along with cam whitmore and it looks like frank nidokina is going to dribble the ball out which is probably the worst idea possible pass it off to j-dub which takes the three and they're going to pass it off or benedict Mathen's going to grab the rebound pass it off to ja and he's going to get followed instantly and it looks like we're going to take this game i love to see it we do end up winning by six points at the end and we are moving on to the next round to take on the seventh seeded new orleans pelicans we'll go ahead and simulate the first game in which we take game two is theirs game three is ours game four is theirs oh man this is a close series and we go down three two ah oh, all right there's no way we should be losing to a seven seed right now we do have the lead going into the second but they do catch back up it is a close game heading into the fourth we do jump away with a little bit of a lead and it looks like we're gonna run away with it in the fourth solid solid game John Morant with 30, Desmond Bain 23, Jaron Jackson 16. Really good win for the boys. Love to see it. Let's go ahead and simcast the next game. Hopefully we can win. I definitely want to make it to the finals and win this championship. It's a really close game heading into the fourth. Minute left, 48 seconds left. Up by one, 27 seconds left. We definitely got to hop in this game. It's a game seven. There's not many opportunities where you can jump into a game seven and watch something crazy unfold. We're going to have Jaron Jackson Jr. inbounding the ball. He's going to pass it into Ja. And it looks like they're going to foul instantly. Not really sure if that's a good idea or a bad idea. Not too sure how good Ja is at the free throw line. And he misses the first one. Wow. Come on, Ja. You got to make those. He does end up making the second. They're going to call a timeout. I'm definitely kind of nervous because they can send us home here. All it takes is one shot. All I can do is make a layup, tie up the game, and force an overtime. So we'll see. Got Jaron Jackson Jr. playing Zion really close. Zion's going to do some stupid shit and drive the ball up. And Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to play really good defense. John Morant is followed, and it looks like he's going to head to the line. Hopefully he can make these ones. He does make the first. Three-point game, Memphis Grizzlies. This should secure the dub. Four-point dub. Our four-point lead. 18 seconds left. Anything can still happen here. We'll kind of let this play out and see what happens. We got Zion dribbling the ball up like a point guard. Messes up very bad. And they end up turning it over. Backcourt violation. Zion, that was not a good decision, bro. All right. See if he can make up for it. Can you make a good defensive play? Nope. They're not going to. They're going to follow basically instantly. It's going to shoot the first free throw. Make that. And that is to seal the game. We love to see it. Unfortunately, it did take seven games, but we do move on to the NBA Finals. Let's see who we're taking on. Looks like it's going to be the Hawks. The 2K franchise's favorite team as of right now. But let's see. Simulate game one in which we take. Game two is theirs. Game three is ours. Let's take 2-2. Oh, two, two. And they take the lead on us. 3-2. Oh, man. This should not be happening to us. 
they do have a good lead heading into the third quarter or second quarter third quarter we do catch back up but they do have a 10 point lead on us we do catch back up but i don't know if it's going to be enough and it's not oh carl anthony towns as your finals mvp oh that is so rough oh man 22 from carl anthony towns damn that's rough all right well let's go ahead and check out the playoff stats see everybody did we had john morant leading the way 27 points per game six rebounds 10 assists basically almost a triple double love to see it desmond bain right behind him with 20 four and a half and five uh, benedict matherin definitely dropped down in scoring i was hoping he would make a little bit more shots but that's okay Jaden hardy off the bench was 16.2 points per game so overall really solid season i was really hoping that would be the year we get it done uh this is definitely going to be the last year of the rebuild just because this is already a pretty long video but we'll go ahead and skip past most of the bullshit like usual go ahead and bring back most of our players um if i'm not able to bring anybody back that's on the current team then i'll show you or tell you about it when we get back to the regular uh regular main screen but i will see you guys at the start of next season all right for the last year of the rebuild the first trade we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be sending cole anthony and bull bull over to the brooklyn nets for jordan pool for our backup uh, point guard position and we also get uh jordan goodwin out of the deal so we'll go ahead and make that trade pretty solid deal jo uh, jordan pool was averaging 22.5 off the bench last year so for the next trade we're gonna be sending jeremiah robinson earl and lindell wigginton over to the bulls for kalel Ware. for our last trade of this season we're gonna be sending away jonathan isaac jordan goodwin and a second round pick to the bulls for jalen mcdaniels and we get lindell Wigg wigginton back so i guess we'll take it go ahead and do this trade for the last year the rebuild our starting lineup is actually looking solid like usual we got John Morant, Benedict Matherin, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., Claxton, Jordan Poole, Herb Jones, Jaden Hardy, Kalel Ware, and Jaden McDaniels. Overall solid roster. I kind of would like to get the bench a little bit better, but there wasn't really too many trades out there. Uh, hopefully, we're a really good team this season because if we don't make it to the finals again, then obviously it's been a really big fail so far. But... Let's go ahead and send this season, and I will see you guys at the end. We're not going to make any more trades. All right, so we are wrapping up the season, and it looks like we might finish as one of the greatest teams in NBA history, but let's go ahead and check it out and see. Yep, we tied the record. 73-9 and nine is the final record. There's no way we don't get it done this season. If we don't, then obviously they just don't want us to win. We got Luka Doncic as your MVP, Isaac Hayes, Rookie of the Year. Oh, Pete, six man, Evan Mobley, Depoy, Caleb Yaskins, most improved, John Morant, clutch player, Steve Clifford, coach of the year. You're all NBA teams. Doesn't look like we have John Morant making it at all. We do have Jaron Jackson sticking to that all defensive second team and Claxton there too. Maybe he was there last year too and I didn't even realize. And we don't have any rookies. We are the one seed taking on Phoenix in the first round. Let's go ahead and simulate the first game in which we take. Game two is also ours. Game three is theirs. Game four is also theirs. Come on. Game five is also theirs. Wow. Okay. So we can win that many games in the regular season, but we can't win games in the playoffs. All right. Let's go ahead and simulate with SimCast. It's a close game heading into the second. We do take the slight lead, but they are coming back. They do take a really fat lead on us heading into the fourth. And yeah, they just ran away with that. Wow, I'm just lost for words right now. 73 wins and 9 losses on a regular season. And we lost in the first round to the A seed. That is uh, my luck. Let's go ahead and check out the season stats. John Morant leading the way. Benedict Matherin. Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain, Jordan Poole. Everybody has just shot really well. Everybody played really well. I don't know, man. This is definitely one of the most uh, rough rebuilds I've had to do. 
You got Cooper Flag as your Western Conference MVP and Evan Mobley as your Eastern Conference MVP and the Cavaliers taking it in five. Grizzlies fans, I am sorry. Uh, I wish I could have won the championship. We made it to the conference finals a few times. The finals tied the record for best team ever assembled. Unfortunately, we just couldn't get it done in the playoffs. I don't know if I made the wrong moves or what, but either way, appreciate you guys watching the video. Make sure to subscribe. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel. If you did watch all the way to the end, leave the word pistol in the comments. You'll understand why. Great my face grizzlies, you know, but either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great rest of your day and deuces.